of its payroll uh, thus far in 2016, and the city is current with the both pension systems of Oakhurst and Police and Fire. Um, on the next groupings of paper with the staple, you'll see is the outstanding payables as of April 13th. The total outstanding payables is approximately $3.4 million, which is about where it was the last time the commission was. But if I'm not mistaken, we had some medical claims last time, where now they're up to date. Uh, correct. The city. Um, has worked through uh, the semantics with the third party provider and the city has um, is now current on the TPA fee as well as claims. The lawsuit judgments I noticed had increased from last year. Is that new judgment? Is that uh, the, um, or is that the interest on the previous judgment? Uh, no, the one that was added was the IAFF local uh, 500 case number for 73,443. What's local 500? Who is that? Uh, that is the, I believe, the firefighters union. They brought a lawsuit against the city. Back in 09. I believe so, yes. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and yes, it is 2016. <laughs> The gift that keeps on. Yeah. <clears throat> and we don't know anything about Nestor. I mean, it's there as an outstanding liability, but it's sort of. I have no not moves. heard of any movement on Nestor. I don't yeah. know if the mayor can no. answer to that. You want to get it reduced? Uh, my final thing is on appropriations, um, the eight and a half um, by 11 with the paper clip. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the city did pass their 2016 appropriations. That is behind the summary with the paper clip is the actual um, resolution passed, ordinance passed by council. On the top, um, I placed a summary so you can kind of see uh, where the city is looking to be at the end of December 31st, 2016. Um, as you can see, the city is taking their existing balances of the non-deficit funds very low. Um, this will be one of the last years the city can actually utilize those balances to help balance the budget. Uh, things have been moved out of the general fund into other funds and the city has depleted those balances. You can see overall the city would be going from about a $600,000 balance to $8,000. Um, you can see every fund is within uh, current for the most part within current estimated resources unless the city is choosing to reduce a positive balance to help balance the budget. Um, in doing the appropriations for the general fund, you'll notice uh, the city is kind of uh, following their recovery plan and continuing to consolidate the deficits within the general fund. Uh, in doing the appropriations for the general fund, the city first ensured that current operating expenditures would be within current revenues. So the increase in deficit is only to consolidate those deficit funds. And in total, that comes to about 579000 in additional appropriations to consolidate those deficits.
And so far, that is all I have. Unless you guys have questions. I was going to say that it's, uh, looking at the fact that the number of uh, uh, deficit funds are decreasing in that program is happening. We're getting to a place where at least you can focus on <coughs> in a single area as opposed to all of the effort to take care of the miscellaneous ones. So I'd say good job in getting it down to one point so we'll be there after this one. It's tough. It's a tough budget to work with. It's like if you don't get the revenues, or we have an, you know, as you anticipated, or if you don't get, or if you have something that necessitates more expenditures, it's not much. That's not much of a cushion. Eighty two hundred dollars. No, there isn't. The city is hoping to implement some revenue generating items. And so the estimated resources are based on what is currently known. So if those revenue generating items come to fruition, fruition, I don't know which one, then I have too much. I don't know <laughs> then the estimated resources uh, may be increased if the other revenues hold true and that is a true increase. Questions? Yeah. Thank you, Tisha. Mayor, what do you have for us? So if I can follow up. Uh, the uh, report will be short and sweet. Uh, you've heard all of the financials. Uh, you've heard the steps that are being taken. Uh, essentially, East Cleveland, after 50 years almost of population loss, job loss, revenue decline, and all the things associated with that. Uh, when a city goes from 40,000 residents to 17,000 residents, when of those 17,000 residents, 5,000 work, uh, it's a difficult uh, road to hold. And there are a lot of indications that in Ohio, a city must rely on the revenue that is generated from the economic activity within its borders. And if you look at the numbers that we just cited, going from 40,000 population to 17,000 population, uh, of those 17,000, 5,000 work, not to mention all of the job flight and wealth flight that has happened uh, over the past 50 years, to rely on the economic activity within the borders of the city of East Cleveland to generate the revenue that is required necessary to run a city with a full fleet of fire and EMS, a full fleet of police, a full fleet of all the emergency equipment you would ever want to need, a fully functioning service department, parks and recreation, senior services, and patching potholes, and, and by the way, replacing an entire city worth of streets and keeping the lights on with $3 million in deficit funds. There comes a time when we have to consider the potential that there is just not the economic activity within the city's borders to generate enough revenue to run a city in Ohio. Uh, so that time is upon us. I think all the numbers and all these meetings say that. Whether this is your first meeting or your second meeting or your 20th meeting, uh, that's just part of the reality. Uh, when it comes to that reality, there are wholesale changes that need to be made, or at least contemplated. Essentially, our economic unit is not functioning the way that it should in order to provide the revenue. We need to change in some way, shape, or form the economic unit. Not the individuals that run the same economic unit with the same economic configuration and revenue drivers, but a different economic unit with different revenue drivers. Uh, so it basically boils down to there's at least one big option out there. I think the community has expressed what it would like to see contemplated, just contemplated and talked about, and that is a merger with the neighboring city that simply needs to have a commission and panel in order to go forward. Uh, we've made all the cuts that one can make. One thing that's not mentioned in these financial reports is the only places to really cut now are safety forces. Once you get past one or two individuals left working for the city, the only places really to cut now are the safety forces. Uh, and it's because 
the size and strength of the economic unit does not generate enough revenue to run a city in the state of Ohio, particularly one where almost every street needs to be replaced. Um, I could say that for about 15 more minutes. I could add about 20 more examples, and that would still leave a thousand examples left that could be added and a thousand minutes that could be talked about. But might as well keep it short and sweet at this point. After all these meetings, the only thing that has changed is we are managing less and less money, and we see that there's less and less money coming in. And in reality, East Cleveland needs a whole lot more money that we have available to us in order to provide the quality of services and security, basic life existence that people have. Can, can I ask what are the new should really be built on the encouragement of economic activity and the encouragement of development, which we try to do. And a lower priority, but still important, is, well, a, 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 an important priority is law enforcement. There is an important element of law enforcement, which is traffic control. And there should be some revenue derived from that. But a city should not engage in things that are solely meant to penalize people because the city's in need of money. Uh, we can enforce traffic. Uh, we can do that to make the community safer. Uh, but when it's considered as something to allow a city to get by on bare bones because it has nothing else coming in in terms of revenue, uh, we have to seriously consider who and what we are when we get to that point. So to answer your question, uh, there is one revenue enhancement mechanism that we have. It's the increased traffic enforcement. We always try and do economic development. We try and get new businesses in town. Some come, but many don't. And that's the elephant in the room, is that there is no uh, easy way to change and make the place a, a place for external investment. And so the investment is only for people who have like, their connection to the place or are here already. And that is a joint group. It's a, it's, and Dr. Kaver, to your point, the reality is that Northeast Ohio yes. is craving investment. Yes. Uh, there's a lack of investment everywhere. There's drops in population everywhere. And some of those economic units, some, most of those cities, can weather the storm because they have the economic base that's required to weather the storm. But when we come to East Cleveland, we have to seriously ask ourselves, do we have the economic base to weather this type of storm where everybody is craving investment because there's very little new investment in the region, not just the city. So if you're here, you have a better choice, right? So if you're coming to Northeast Ohio, then there are other places that can offer a Absolutely. bit more than what East Cleveland offers. And, and the bedroom community model just doesn't work in modern metropolitan areas. Right. And we're a bedroom community. Maple Heights is one, Warrensville Heights, and uh, increasingly, you can't do it on income tax alone from residents who are asked to remit the tax themselves at that, right? So I only do you only have five thousand people who are working of that five thousand. I don't know what that number is, but I know uh, in one of these spaces the amount that are gonna actually pay their tax to East Cleveland might be three thousand. Right. The other ones have a, a address at a local place in Cleveland so they don't get double tax. Right. That's the uh, economic problem that we face but you know, there are so many things that are required to address an economic problem that the pieces that we employ, unless we put them all together at the same time, are not strong enough to address an economic problem. What about the uh, building development that we've heard about next to the cemetery? Is that a... Yes. <coughs> yes. What do you there, expect from that? There will be a redevelopment there. There will be a couple of redevelopments along you. Uh, they'll generate, each of them probably, several thousand dollars in income tax revenue from the residents or, and or businesses that might locate there. 
uh, that income tax revenue will be several years off uh, because they just take a while to build and occupy it and, and the tax after a year in existence. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a good thing. The challenge, though, is that it's, just, it's such a small increase from such a small geographic area, it's not enough to really right the ship uh, for the entire economic unit of these people. Now back to the financial supervisors. If we look at, I think, where we were maybe four years ago and maybe four years ago, it might be longer than that now. The actual bare bones budget for East Cleveland would need to be about fifteen million. Is that it? Is that a if you were just looking at the general fund, you may not have the answer, but I think five or six years ago that number was was fifteen million. Um, where you weren't fifteen seventeen. Yeah, and so whatever you're doing, you're talking about coming from 10, let's just use the 16. You know, you need 60% more revenue. And if you need 60% more revenue, every that year. means that... Every year. Every year. That means that you would have to virtually overhaul the entire city, right? So 60% of the city would have to be overhauled. And it would all have to pay in at once. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and, and this... I, I, when I give a mayor's report, I try and make it brief. Something that I should have included is that we're talking about this as a snapshot in many cases. But if we expand the snapshot beyond 2016, those who jack uh, our council members who are here day to day see how difficult it was for this city to trim $700,000 from its budget in 2016. The financial recovery plan requires another million dollars in cuts for 2017, which we have to start now. So we just finished cutting 700,000, we have to cut another million. And then at the end of 2017, going into 2018, the plan calls for two and a half, $2.8 million in cuts. Essentially, a budget that was $11 million last year has to go down to $7 million in a couple of years. That's 35% of the budget when we're already not able to afford police and firefighters. I mean, this is it's just devastating, a devastating situation. And with that, there's probably a fire alarm. <laughs> or maybe that's the alarm saying I'm important. <laughs> I said it all. That was my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. something I said. I don't know if that I could say any more than that. I, I just, I like to do quick and not dirty, but quick math because that's all I'm doing able to do. Um, if we look at, just looking at the, the appropriations, the last thing that we looked at, we're looking at estimated resources. We take 9.9 .9 million, but at the end of this year, say that is what we'll get in revenue in 17. We'll already have a deficit of 3.2 million Right. in the general fund, add to that 3.4 million in past due payables, 6.6, and you're only, if you're lucky, going to get 9.9. .9. That leaves you 3 million some dollars to run the city. Can't be right. That's the fire department. Okay. Yeah. That's the fire department. Yeah. So, and, and what we're accustomed to dealing with, I think, in local governments, and in really all over, is problems with costs. We're, we're able in local governments everywhere to deal with problems, cost overruns. We cut down costs. Mm -hmm. But what local governments rarely face, and what we're beginning to face, is problems with revenue. Yeah. We can't add to the revenue. And there's only so many costs that we can cut. And I think what we see in East Cleveland is you know, a lot of people say, well, you cut the fat, you cut the fat. There, there's only, essentially, there's only a court and police department and fire department with a little bit of a service department left. That's it. And, and when we talk about additional cuts to cut another 35% from this budget over the next four years, we have to choose either a police department or a fire department. We cannot have both. And we've seen cost of trying to contract for fire and EMS with a neighboring city, it's higher than what we currently pay right now. Uh, so 
Because our neighbors aren't strong. Right. 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 I mean, right. And they're not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, They're not charging. Yes, again. Because they need revenue as well. It's the economic unit. And, and this group has spent a few years now pondering the same things. And, you know, we need look no further than what has been discussed here for the past few years. And the only question now is how long do we allow the residents and businesses here to go down the road? to either a police department or a fire department. That's the only question now. That's how long are we going to take to act? There's no kind of, no kind of choice, that's for sure. <laughs>